Hi everyone, this is Matra here from Paper Crane Lab. Welcome to the first of many uh, 3D printing tutorials. Um, in this series, we're going to be looking at what is 3D printing, what is the sort of technologies behind it, um, we're going to be talking about how we can actually design and print something. But for the first of the series, we're doing something simple and fun. We're going to be designing and printing a keychain. That's it. Um, the idea is that we're going to be using open source and freely available software. So we're going to be using Tinkercad to design the uh, keychain itself. And uh, specifically for the for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be writing something. It could be our name, it could be a, a word that you just you know, want 3D print in. Um, and we're going to be converting that into a uh, keychain. I've linked to one of our earlier videos uh, over here, which tells you about the printer that we have, which is a Flash Forge Finder. So we're going to go from the beginning of how to design it to actually end up printing it on our Flash Forge Finder. Um, if you want to do the same thing, remember we have something called a PCL pass, so you can come on over and print it in our lab. So let's get started. Okay, so to do the actual designing, we're going to be using Tinkercad. So just head over to tinkercad.com, go to the dashboard, and this is the view that you should see. Um, do make sure to have an account. If you do not have an account, you should be able to log in on the top left like this. So you can just sign up, log in, create an account, and go ahead. So once you're in here, head over to Designs, go to Create, and 3D Design. Just a side note, Tinkercad is actually also great for uh, circuit design. So if you're into the Arduino or any microcontrollers like that, um, there's actually a list of all the microcontrollers it supports. You can design the circuit, write the code, and test it out, everything on, um, on Tinkercad. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a 3D design. First things first, let's rename it. So, um, there we have. We've named it. Now let's just understand the layout. Tinkercad itself has wonderful resources, so I'm not going to be getting into a complete um, details of you know every possibility within Tinkercad. I will link to a couple videos for the same. But for right now, let's look at the things that we need. This is your work plane, meaning this is where we're going to actually be making the design. Uh, a couple important things to know is how to actually move the work plane so that you can see your design from all angles, right? Um, that's something you want to do when you're designing is make sure you understand how it will actually look as a physical 3D object before you send it to print. So this nice little cube on the top left, if you just hold and drag, it'll help you sort of move the plane and see what's happening. So for the sake of today, we're going to be just looking at a couple simple shapes and that's it. Um, there is a lot more to explore, but for today's video, we won't be going into that. So just to understand what these shapes are, let's just drag a box onto the screen. Now you notice that there's a bunch of white squares and black squares on the corners of them. So let's click on it. So when you click on it, it turns red. When you hover over it, also it turns red. But let's just click on one. And you'll see that it says 20 over here. So that refers to the uh, the sides, right? The dimension of the sides of the cube. And the units it is in is an mm. So it's 20 mm or 2 centimeters. Um, and you can actually just move this along. You can move these edges to resize your cube. Or you can actually just type the size you want here in mm and that should work. This one over here refers to the height. It's usually easier to see the height if you rotate your work plane a little bit. So let's say I want this to be 5. There you go. And a fun little feature is if you see this little conical arrow over here, this one, what this actually does is it moves the object up. This is interesting, not something we're going to be using today, but just always good to know. Okay, and once you're done playing around with whatever you were making, you can just press and hit delete. Zoom in and zoom out of the work plane um, as you just by zooming and zooming out with your mouse. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today, as we mentioned, was 3D print a word, right? So what I'm going to do, and especially if you're a calligraphy lover, this is going to be a lot of fun. Click on this uh, option for base in, in within basic shapes called scribble. 
and just place it anywhere right the center preferably and once you place it it will open up an area like this and this is the fun part this is where we're going to just sort of write what we want I'm going to be writing PCL over here um, right now I'm using mousepad but if you have a Wacom something go for it um, this is just gold for calligraphy artists and I'm excited for all of you to try it out so let me just write PCL There we go. So I'm just making sure that it's continuous, right? Because I want the whole thing to be con uh, printed as a single piece. So just making sure that everything is attached. Now that that's done, I'm just going to say done. Okay, so now we have the PCL over here and it's extruded as a 3D model. So that's great. What we can do is start working on this model to make it a keychain. Now, the height of this is 10 mm, um, one centimeter. We recommend three mm. It's usually enough uh, to make it sturdy. And it's also what we recommend if you're working with our printers is given that, you know, we know how much time it takes to print and all of that. So I've reduced this to three mm. And now what I want to do is I want to add a ring so that I can actually add the hook of the keychain to it. So to do that, just head over here, choose this tube option. Um, and let's just edit it alone for a second. Uh, I'm going to make the height of this as well, 3mm as well. Um, and let's maybe make it of about 5mm diameter. So that's half a centimeter. That should be enough. Um, the wall thickness is 2.5mm. You can see that over here, and that is okay. And let's move this such that it overlaps with PCL. Now, this is where moving the work plane around comes help becomes helpful because I can actually see if it's overlapping. So I see some overlap there. That's great. But let's make the height 3mm again. There we go. You can make the height of this a little lesser as well if you want it to, if you want there to be a difference between the height of the ring and the keychain itself. But for now, I'm just going to keep this 3mm. And what we're going to do is actually select both of them, both the ring or the tube and the PCL and group them. So you can select them by the selecting one, pressing shift and then clicking on the other or just drag over and then we're going to group it. So that's the option up top here or you can do control G or command G. Once you group them, you'll see that it actually becomes the same color and now it is a single object. Now, one thing to remember is these colors don't matter. What actually matters is the color, color of the filament that you load into your 3D printer. So these can be whatever color you wish. Um, it's just easy to know that if, you know, typically if they're two different colors, they're separated objects. And if once you group them, they become one color. Okay, now our model's ready. So let's export it. So I'm going to click on export and export it as an OBJ, which is how we're going to be 3D printing this. Now, this is done, but uh, this model cannot be directly sent to the 3D printer because we need to sort of send it in a language that the 3D printer can understand, which is called G-Code. And the software that we're going to be using to do that is called FlashPrint. Um, so FlashPrint, the software is specific to FlashForge uh, printers, which is what we have over here. Okay, so I'm now going to go to Downloads where we have the zip file of the OBJ. And here we go. So you can either drag and drop this onto the surface over here. And if you're not comfortable with drag and drop, you can go to file, load file. Head over to the same place and where you have your OBJ file and hit open. And what this will do is bring the 3D model onto flash print. So once it's over here, um, in this case, we don't need to make any changes, but just to you know have an idea, let's just look at um, three options. The first one is view that uh, I'm not going to change the view settings now, but it's essentially how you want to view your model. Do you want to view it from the top, left, etc. The second one is move. Once you select your model, you can actually move it around. Um, in this case, I would recommend not moving it around. But if you did, you can just make sure it's on the platform, click that button and make sure it's centered. It's just nice to be able to print in the center of your work plane on your 3D printer as well. And scale, that's the third option that we're going to look at. Uh, this will just basically tell you the dimensions of your uh, 
model and this one is of 3 mm height 28 mm width and 21 mm um, length and that's that's perfect for me so in this case we're not scaling anything but if we want to this is where we will be doing it okay so now we're going to say start slicing now this is where we can actually decide how we want it to print so how it works is the filament comes through and it prints in layers so while you are slicing you can tell it how many layers do you want do you want it to be many layers which will make it a very fine print or do you want it to be fewer layers which means it will be printed fast but it won't be as clean or smooth another thing that changes with um, in slicing is let's say you were printing a block like a complete cube then what is the fill density of the cube how much of it in within the cube do you want it to be 3d printed 15 percent 10 percent all of that so all of those are things that you can decide over here within the slice profile so fast is will be the fastest print but the layer heights will be more and the fill density will be less and fine is the other end of the spectrum where it's a very small layer height meaning it's a lot more layers meaning making it a lot smoother and the fill density is also more meaning your object is going to be more dense and strong um, for this, I typically just uh, click on standard and that works perfectly. Um, it's in between the fine and the fast and we're going to say slice. Now, if you want to have more options on slicing, there is something called the expert mode where you can do that. But for today, we're going to be sticking to this. Okay, so now that I did this, I can click on what is known as a slice preview just to understand what's actually happening. So let's have a look at this. So over here, you're seeing two things, layers and steps. So layers actually tells you how many layers are being printed. And as you move along, you can see the 3D model sort of raising up. Let's just go to the first layer and you'll see something called steps. This is there in every layer, but I'm just looking at the first one. And you'll see over here the model actually being made. So this is exactly how your printer is going to be printing. It's going to start with that outer bounding box and then start with the outline of PCL and then start creating the inner shapes and then filling it. So if you want to understand exactly how the printing has happened, this is great preview. So I'm going to actually close the preview now. Um, you can download the G code known as a .g or .gx file and give it to your uh, 3D printer via USB, but we are actually going to be going via Wi-Fi today. So to do that, we are going to click send to printer and let's just now set up the printer and come back to this. A few moments later. Okay, so to send it over to the 3D printer, we're going to send it over Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go here and say IP address. So I'm going to head over to the 3D printer and turn it on. Once it's on, you will get a bunch of options over here. And one of the options is tools. Within tools, we can go to settings, Wi-Fi, and we've already connected to the Wi-Fi before, so I'm just going to click on it and see what port it is. And it says 192.168.14, so I want to connect to 4, and the port is 8889, which is always what it is. So the IP address is 192.168.14. So I'm going to say connect machine. Now, before I send it, I still haven't pressed on this final connect over here. And I haven't said, uh, now I haven't yet said send G code. The reason I'm going to wait on this is we don't actually have any filament over here. So let me go back to tools, change filament, load filament. I'm going to use this blue PLA over here. Um, just going to cut down the edge so that it's clean and I'm going to put it onto this holder over here. Now the flash bar chooses a different kind of roll that fits into the uh, slot that they have for the filament but we're using PLA but it from a different brand. So because it doesn't print, we print it, uh, because it doesn't fit, we printed this holder which is kind of fun, we're printing tools for our 3D printer with our 3D printer. Um, so this nib has to heat to 220 degrees Celsius before we can load filament into it. So I'm just going to wait for that to happen. So it's close to 220. It's at 208 degrees Celsius right now.
and soon you'll hear a beep that says the it's hot. There we go. So I will insert it into the slot that goes through the motor and comes out here. So you have to push this a little bit so that it's kind of forced in. Not not too much, just give it enough pressure so that it knows which direction to go in and then you will see the filament coming out. There, you can see the filament coming out here and we're just going to say done. So now that the blue filament is coming out, we're going to go back to our computer and send G code to the 3D printer. Let's call it PCL teaching. Now it's going to take about seven minutes to print, so let's sort of watch this go by faster. Okay, there we go. So it's printed over there. Let's just remove it. I'm gonna use, just gonna pull this out. So I used a scale to be able to pull it out a little easily. But here it is. So here is the keychain. I just attached a little keyring to it. Um, there you go, from design to prototype to something I can actually use right now. Um, so go ahead and try it out yourself. The link to book a PCL pass is over here. Um, make sure to do the design at home and then come and use the machines over here. Thank you so much and see you back in episode two.